If you think rising interest rates are just numbers on a screen, think again. In this video, I'm pulling back the curtain on why I'm hitting the sell button on all of my Alberta properties and the reasons might surprise you. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. Over the past few months, I've been selling off my Alberta portfolio of properties for a variety of reasons. So let me dive into the five reasons why. Number one, rising interest rates and cash flow. The first major reason behind the decision is the impact of rising interest rates on my cash flow. As interest rates have been climbing, the amount of money that I've been able to generate for these properties has decreased significantly. With rental income remaining relatively constant and mortgage payments increasing, the gap between them has shrunk, leaving me with limited cash flow to cover expenses and to further invest. One of the main advantages of investing in smaller markets that have less expensive real estate has generally been that they offer higher cash flow compared to your invested dollars. But when that goes away, it's time to liquidate. On each property I own in Alberta, I used to generate about $1,000 a month after all of my expenses. And that has shrunk to about $100 with this high interest rate environment. Going from $5,000 a month down to $500 a month in cash flow is a reality in today's market that many investors are facing. Number two, mortgage paydown. As interest rates rise, a larger portion of your mortgage payment goes towards the interest rather than the principal. This means that the rate at which I'm paying down the mortgages on these properties has slowed down, which affects the long-term appreciation of my investment and my overall return on investment. To put that into context with some actual numbers, with my $1,000 of cash flow per month and paying down about $6,000 per year in my mortgage, between those two items, I was generating approximately $18,000 a year. A typical property in my Alberta portfolio is worth about $300,000, which means that I would have put down about $60,000 as the down payment. With those numbers, my return on investment was approximately 30% annualized, even if the property didn't go up in value. But now, with only $4,200 between cash flow and mortgage paydown on my $60,000 investment, my return has gone to about 7% annually. While 7% may seem like a decent return for many in the stock market, I find I can make a higher rate of return than that in real estate, which leads me to my next point. Number three, higher rates of return. By selling these properties, I have the opportunity to invest my money in avenues that offer a higher rate of return. Whether it's investing in my businesses or deploying the funds to other real estate markets, I believe that reallocating my funds will allow me to capitalize on better investment prospects. If you're not analyzing your returns on an annual basis, I suggest you start. By looking at the return on equity, you'll quickly be able to tell if you should be keeping your properties in your portfolio or looking for a better investment. If you're not familiar with how to calculate your return on equity, take the annual amount that you generate on each property each year. For this calculation, I use my net cash flow after all expenses and the amount that I pay down to the principal of the mortgage each year. I then divide that by the amount of equity I have in the property. To calculate how much equity you have, take the difference between the amount owing on your mortgage and the market value or the appraised value of your property. Let's use the same numbers from the last example. If I have $4,200 in cash flow and mortgage pay down, and I have $90,000 in equity, my return on equity would be about 4.6%. At 4.6% return, I can probably get that money working at a higher rate elsewhere. Number four, portfolio consolidation. One of my goals is to streamline my investment strategy and focus on a few strategic locations. I've decided to concentrate my efforts on places like Toronto and Costa Rica, where I see promising growth potential and better market conditions. This consolidation will not only simplify my management tasks, but also potentially lead to higher returns in the long run. Currently, I have properties in Toronto, Hamilton, Newmarket, Red Deer, and in two locations in Costa Rica. In each of those locations, I have a team of people who work to keep the properties operating smoothly. By reducing that down to one or two markets, I get economies of scale and I can streamline operations. It also gives me a competitive advantage in those markets because I have become an expert in that area. When a new opportunity arises, I can act on it quickly because of my specialized knowledge in that specific location. Number five, quality over quantity. I've come to realize that the amount of doors you have in your portfolio is irrelevant. You may have 500 doors in your portfolio. Congratulations, that's amazing. But if none of them cash flow or grow in value or you have a vacancy rate of 30%, then 500 doors doesn't matter. 
I'd rather focus on my quality of investments. One or two quality investments in your portfolio can be all you need. My Alberta portfolio consists of five duplexes totaling 10 doors. While these properties were and are well-maintained, have great tenants and solid management, the properties we are building in Toronto have 10 doors under one roof. This means less to maintain, less to manage, and with 10 doors under one roof, we have multifamily financing, which has many advantages. Ultimately, I also believe that the Toronto market will far outperform the Alberta market in the short term and the long term, giving me higher returns for less effort. Now, the one downside to selling off my Alberta portfolio of properties is that when I did travel out to see my family, I could use it as a tax write-off because I was always doing work on the properties when I was here. But that's a small piece of the puzzle and not a reason to hold on to a portfolio. If you take away one item from this video, remember, investing is a dynamic journey and adapting to the changing market conditions and personal goals is essential. I suggest evaluating your goals and portfolio returns at least on an annual basis to make well-informed decisions. If you're interested in investing alongside of me in Toronto or Costa Rica, check out my website at darrenvoros.com for my latest investment opportunities and my courses and trainings on real estate development. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regular updates on our active development and projects. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.